I'm good. How are you? Good. Big Friday plans? Um, nope. Actually, I'm in LA and it's, um, sadly, there's a bunch of fires, so we can't even go outside. Yeah. COVID stuff. But now that, like, we literally, it's pretty unhealthy to be outside. So I guess staying in, watching a movie, doing nothing. I know. Kind of nice, I guess. I guess. Did you finish watching The Office? No. Well, actually, I've, um, I've probably watched the entire series like once or twice all the way through. Now I'm probably on my Got third it. time going through it. So I'm probably gotcha. going to again. Yeah. Ah, I love that you show. There so you go. Good. Yeah, but it's great to talk to you. Look at you. Sydney from Echo Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, absolutely. Look, Sydney, it's a good time to catch up because you've had such an explosive career. I mean, I remember, honestly, like when Come Together was on YouTube. It seems like oh yesterday. Gosh. It wow. seems like it was just yesterday. And like, look at everything that's happened since. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's I insane. Love it's insane. So I want to ask you, Sydney, has this COVID-19 thing in a way been like, like a good thing? that you've like, for the first time, you've had a chance to kind of like chill and like look around at the impact that you've had, you know, in such a short amount of time. That's a really good way of putting it. I think COVID, this whole quarantine and stuff has really left a lot of room for reflection for sure. Yeah. Um, and left a lot of room for a lot of things. Um, and yeah, it really has shown me time is valuable and it's something that I think we take for granted a lot. Um, so just kind of figuring out what to do with time because you know there were plenty of times on tour where we were so busy doing so many shows and radio visits and this and that and this and that and like all day long i would have killed for you know a week off you know so the fact that we've had now i mean we're going on six months or something yeah uh, it's definitely allowed for a lot of time of reflection and hanging out i'm married now so i get to hang out with my husband more yeah. like school and um i'm definitely trying to see the positive side of it although there are days where it's like Oh, this is weird and absolutely, you know. absolutely. And how's married life going? You know, just what vaguely touch on it. How's it going? It's good. Um, I love being married, and of course, being able to actually be together physically is always nice too. Because right. you know, sometimes when I'm on tour or whatever, we get to see each other when he visits and stuff. But um, being together for this long is really cool, and we've gotten to. I mean, we already knew each other so well, but I just feel like we've grown even closer in this time and um through the good the hard um i'm just so grateful to have my best friend with me through it ah, that's it just, great it really feels that way we just get to laugh so much so i feel that's like awesome. that keeps you happy no matter what <laughs> that's great See, yeah so it's like a blessing absolutely but uh, lonely generation sydney i have to tell you i think i think it came out at a really fortuitous time because you know we've talked to a lot of bands that they released it just a couple months after, after it, after you guys did. But you guys had a chance to tour it. I mean, you guys started in Washington D.C. A, a little bit in uh, February, I believe, and you guys played like 15 or so shows. So even though I'm sure I know you had another tour in the in the summer and you probably had more plans, but at least you got to play some of it. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious how you feel about that. Like, do you feel like, man, like at least we got to show some of this with our fans? Or like, is it like hunger that, you know, you were just getting into them? Well, yeah, there's, there's definitely a mix of both. I'm so grateful we got to complete a tour. We didn't have to cancel any shows on that particular tour. Of course, yeah, we had right. to cancel the summer tour and all sorts of other plans. But we got to actually complete one of the tours right before. So that we felt so grateful that we were able to even do that without any hesitation. Because no one was, you know, worried about it at the time. And so we were able, you know... I guess yeah. it was appearances bliss at that point. Um, but we were so grateful to do that. But then we were bummed, of course, because we felt like we were just getting back into it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then all of a sudden, three weeks into touring, it's like, oh, wait, I don't know when we can tour again. And even now, we obviously still don't really know. We're, of course, we're all aiming for next year and yeah. maybe summer of next year. But at the end of the day, we don't know. So it's it's hard living in the unknown, especially once – we had this awesome tour that I just had so much fun on. I was like, I get tour all year long. I'm so excited for the summer and let's mm -hmm. book a fall tour and all this stuff. And <laughs> so, you know, we got to be grateful, but there is obviously disappointment. You know, we were really, really looking forward to the for King country tour with them. Um, but we know that there will be plenty more years of touring in our future. So we have to just embrace it now. Cause obviously there's something we can do about it. So right. this is meant to be at this moment. And we just got to see what we're, supposed to learn in this time 
Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, you're right. I mean, your last show was probably like March 5th or something. Yes, good job. You're so, you know everything. I love no, it. No, no, but it's, it's great because you guys were probably like, let's do it. One more before the virus, you know? Oh my gosh. It literally, <laughs> like, I, so much was going on that day. I don't even know if like, I don't know. I remember we played Seattle a couple of days before that. And that's where it was starting to kind of, starting to happen. Yeah. Um, March 2nd or 3rd and I remember someone came afterwards to like they saw me at a restaurant or something like oh my gosh that show was so much fun like I know there would have been like even more people there because some people are worried about the COVID thing and that was yeah, right yeah. Like, everyone was worried really so I was like oh yeah I mean it was a great crowd in my opinion so I, I mean I didn't really notice no but 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 your fa your fan is 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 true we I went to a music festival on like the 5th or the 6th and oh, there was like wow. no people and and, wow. the, and it was Mumford and Sons, Heim, you know, the Vampire Weekend, yes. the whole thing. And there were no people in, in Florida, Okeechobee Music. Oh, wow. And you could get to the front, you know, like we were taking photos, like at the photo pit, but there were no fans yes. 10 minutes before. It was unbelievable. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And that was, little did we know those would be our last concerts, you right. know? Right, absolutely, Sydney. So yeah, let me ask you a little bit about uh, about your early career, and then we'll more. This is fun. This is fun. This is like I a great part. Absolutely. So, you know, you had so much success and young. Uh, it it kind of came fast. Kind of came fast and steady. And I was thinking today, like, you know, do you worry that like you never really had a chance to kind of grow up out of the spotlight make stupid mistakes because mm -hmm. i feel like social media is like a thing now of course but like you know the normal stuff that people had to go through early in their in their lives like do you do you ever think about that or not really um not i mean i don't think about it often but there are times where it'll cross my mind you know because we actually got to play um we played so many college shows on right. college campuses so that's always a reminder whenever I'm there I'm like oh my gosh like this is what I would be doing right now I mean now I guess I would have been graduated I'm 23 now but right um but it was funny to like be in these places these really beautiful colleges it's not like I was thinking oh my gosh like I was still so grateful that I was there to perform obviously it was such of a of course thing. um but it did make me like kind of have this I don't know not feeling of missing out but just more like Oh yeah, remember when I used to like go to school because I ended up homeschooling the rest of high school and obviously didn't go to college. So yeah, um, I do sometimes have those those thoughts when I'm like, oh, I wonder what I would have been like if I went right. just like the the you know typical route that I would have gone if it didn't yeah. work out. You know, so I do wonder that sometimes. But obviously, then I you know remember, oh yeah, this is where I'm meant to be, and I'm so grateful yeah. that I get to have this life, even if it means that it's more interesting to make friends. It's not as easy as it is for someone who went to college and got to make all those friends there and, you know, yeah. have more of a maybe normal life. Um, but I think it's worth, you know, I think the good obviously outweighs the challenge. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you didn't have to have tequila jello shots, but <laughs> to thousands of people cry to your music and your voice. So that's a good trade-off. Exactly. And the thing is, it's like, you still have to have, you know, it's not like I'm, you know, every time I just step outside my front door, it's like so crazy bananas. Like, you know, so I feel like I have a good blend of like, oh yeah, like people will recognize me and stuff and we get to play amazing shows and affect so many people in such a positive way. But I do get to have a balance of like having some privacy too and, you know, getting to, I mean, I'm obviously an imperfect human, so I obviously mess up and stuff, but I feel like it's not like I'm Britney Spears who every, you know, every move that you make is being watched. So I, I definitely get to have a balance, but you know, it is still not necessarily normal. So you just, you get used to it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Sydney. Uh, I, by the way, you and your, and your siblings, I love that. I, I, I find it so fascinating because I think of um, the chemistry that you guys have. And I think of bands like Oasis or Black Crowds, their siblings, and they end up hating each other. And you almost want to, you know, you want to get the Oasis brothers and be like, guys, know, like no. you guys made some of the best music of all so, time and you, and you can't stand each other's guts. Yeah. Why do you think it's so hard for some sibling bands to, you know, get along and, and what's the secret sauce there, Sydney? <laughs> um, well, I think in general, it's hard to be a band, period. Whether you're related or not, there are so many challenges and dynamics that you have to navigate and somehow work through but for yeah. us we see it as an advantage that we've been family because we can be so honest with each other and i feel like if i was with just a bunch of random guys in my band um 
I would really struggle with being feeling like I could because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I can be a people pleaser. You know, I feel like I would struggle with being honest about how I feel or, you know, needing certain things to change or whatever. So we can have really open and honest conversations, but being family, you also have to be careful you're not you don't go too far with that because you don't want to be like so honest that you're like brutally right. honest either. Um, so you definitely have to like rein that in and make sure you're not taking advantage of the fact that you can be so open and honest with each other. But um, we try to use that to, you know, to communicate effectively with each other. And of course we have our moments where we fight or we'll be fighting right before a show. And, you know, we still have to go on stage and we just shake it off. And usually we get, we're over it by the time the show's over. And we're like, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. You know? Um, so we honestly just try to do our best to communicate well, but also hear each other out as well and realize it's just as important to listen as it is to, speak your mind and i think that's super valuable with anything you do but especially if you're working together creatively and with family you gotta make sure to talk about things in here yeah time. yeah look at that look at that look, look at sydney <laughs> therapist we <laughs> should sit, we should sit you with like the gallagher brothers and all of them and be like all right ladies and gentlemen oh, this guys, is let's this talk is <laughs> yes let's talk we're gonna get the band together oh i love it oh, yeah i might need some yeah. professional training <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know how like you know how you wouldn't mix like okay uh you know what sydney uh, we need you to sing at a higher pitch and also why were you so rude at grandma's during thanksgiving <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like it is hard to separate sometimes. There are moments where it's like you get mad over something so stupid in a professional setting because really something else was bugging you earlier and you didn't talk about it or you didn't just because also sometimes you just have to let it go. You don't have to talk about everything. That's also okay. something that we've learned. Unbelievable. So, you're so yeah. wise. So wise. Sydney. <laughs> Drying. Oh my I know. I know. Okay. So obviously, you know, you're in LA. You grew up in California. Your father, of course, is um, producer, songwriter, Jeffrey David. Uh, mm -hmm. Very talented and successful in his own right. Uh, and we love your influences, by the way. I mean, the fact that you guys were influenced by Echo and the Bunny Man, you two, who we obviously love. Um, or I see it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it for Sydney. Um, was it your father who first introduced you to the power of a well-written song? Pretty much. I mean, we, I mean, we discovered bands and our influences in all sorts of ways. But of course, our dad is super into music and really knows what he's talking about when it comes to music. And yeah. uh, so of course he shared all of his favorite bands with us, like U2, for example, that's his number one favorite band in the whole world. Um, so of course he showed us music. And then also when we would look into bands that we liked, just finding them on our own, like the Killers, for example, they're super right. influenced by the eighties as well and really cool bands. So that's kind of how, especially my older brothers um, found a lot of, cool 80s bands for themselves too and we're like oh my gosh this is so cool and they influence this band that I love and that one so it was kind of a blend of our dad showing us stuff and then obviously I mean us finding things on our own but especially my older brothers were like great at discovering I don't know I didn't really take the time as much to like dive deep into who inspired who I was just like oh my gosh I love the killers you know <laughs> um and uh then I would kind of let my brothers be like hey check out Echo and the Bunny Man of the Smiths or whatever um so it was fun to discover music that way for me it made it nice and easy they're like hey here's great music and i just got to yeah. listen so it was nice amazing sydney what's the first song you remember writing like how old were you oh gosh what's the first memory of songwriting were you four five eight i mean so young for sure um because i was nine when we started the band and i was already writing songs for a while before that yeah uh, so i don't know i mean we oh gosh I mean, I remember like kind of trying to write a song with my dad, I think when I was like probably five-ish, oh. maybe six. Maybe six is when I started. Now I'm thinking I'm like, my nephew is about to turn five. I'm like, could he start writing a song right now? Maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to remember now. But um, yeah, I think probably like five or six-ish I started writing and we were just always oh, in the God. studio and singing songs even for um, Christmas. We would always make a song for our grandparents every year. So it would be either like a cover of a Christmas song or we would write a new song, which probably mostly my dad was writing, but we got to kind of be involved and like sing songs for them. And it's so cute. We have, we still have those of us singing at like two or three years old, singing to yeah. our grandparents and saying a little note. But well, I, you know, I got to tell you, Sydney, I mean, obviously, you know, you're very talented and you have a lot of gifts, but like your songwriting, I have to just like give props to your songwriting. It's so good. And scouring the internet, there's not a bad word about the songwriting that you guys have done. No. Straight up. No, there's not a blog. There's not a troll. There's a consensus. <laughs> the internet can't agree on anything. 
in no, anything. <laughs> and the, but there's an agreement about the quality of songwritings of, of, of your band. Aww. I mean, even be, even the Beatles, you know, they had songs like She Loves You, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. Like even they started with like some basic concepts. But yeah. you guys, I mean, you have songs like Scared to Be Alone, Sydney. And you go into like Save Me From Myself Now, I Can't Handle Anymore Because I'm Scared to Be Alone. You go into these really dark, deep places. So I have to ask you like, how do you convert yourself into these characters mm -hmm. that are in these depths? That's a good question. Um, and I'm glad you asked because I, you know, when I'm doing interviews around on stage, even when I'm hanging out with friends and stuff, you know, I'm so bubbly and excited and usually very positive and stuff. But, um, you know, I've learned as I've gotten older that there are so many different parts to being me. And it's really interesting to discover what that means. And Scared to Be Alone was written um, towards the beginning of me, like starting to, you know, go to therapy and just sort of dive deeper into what makes me me and what can I do better to just actively try to become a better person every single day? Because I know that I'm flawed and that there's lots for me to work on, but what are those things? Cause I could be one to be like, well, let's just have fun and think about the hard stuff later. Um, right. So I was trying to actually like, not live in negativity by any means, but really take time to sit with myself and figure out what that means. And I found out that I actually don't like to be alone very much. And I'm learning now how to enjoy that. But I've been surrounded by people my entire life. There's, a, you know, there's four of us in the siblings and, you know, on tour, you're with everyone all the time. And that was something that I realized after taking a little break from touring, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to be by myself. That sounds awful. And then I think, you know, that's when I start thinking about the hard stuff and I want to avoid that. So anyway, that's kind of what led me to being inspired to write Scared to Be Alone. And um, it was cool to be really honest with that, even though it was, it still is a very vulnerable subject, but um, you kind of just got to push yourself to talk about things that are hard. Otherwise, you're just going to give the illusion that everything is always great for me. And yeah, if you're struggling, then just get over it. You know, you don't want to say that to your fans, even if it's insinuated. So I, I want everyone to know that we go through all of it, you know, the good, bad, the hard, the in between. And um, I think it's good for people to see that, especially from people in the public eye. Unbelievable, Sydney. I, I feel like I'm talking to Oprah, Tony Robbins. I don't know what's happening. I, I'm ready to like just burst out the window and take, I, I'm so inspired. Anyway. Oh, that's so sweet. Let's talk about talking dreams for a second. Um, just, a, just a little obscure EP that you guys did. Very, very little success. Not a lot of people heard it. No, but seriously, I mean, that album, Sydney, obviously, Future on ESPN, Warp Tour, I mean, Cool Kids. You could go anywhere, like, and hear that song, Cool Kids. I, I, like, you would go to Walgreens to get some headache medicine, and whatever, the whole thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, when was the first time, I think, that you realized, and you looked at your brothers, you looked at your dad, or whatever, that you had the realization that that album was blowing up hmm. like for real what was the moment wow um it's hard to choose just one because it felt like so many things led up to it um yeah. but i would say um i don't know just starting to play shows where of course people were singing our songs back to us in a real way especially when we would go to places that were far from home you know we went to the philippines and played this amazing sold out show and people are just singing yeah. our songs at the top of their lungs wow. and I'm like, oh my gosh, we are so far from home and they don't just know us. They know our music and they are relating to it. And it's when that kind of stuff happens, especially in foreign places, um, that's when I would be like, oh my gosh, this is, there's something here. This is really happening. And this is something I need to really soak up because this is not normal. This no. is not something that happens to everyone. So that's where I was like, oh my gosh, remember this. And I have videos from like, pretty much every show where people were singing along to cool kids and sometimes other songs too. Um, yeah. I have videos of well, crowd singing cool kids from all over the world over the years. So that, that hopefully will help me remember, but oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And shout out to my little cousin Maya, just because she loves bright and her bad mitzvah and the whole thing. Oh, yeah, like, Lord, hi, I love you, Maya. <laughs> um, Sydney. Yeah. Like, and like when you are out and about, like with your husband doing errands, let's say you're like, I don't know, furniture shopping. I don't know. And you hear one of your songs. Because I know it's happened. Yeah. You know, you've got your sunglasses on, you're incognito, and you hear one of your songs. What's the feeling like? Is it like, oh, God. Oh, no. I'm, like, literally so pumped. Literally, like, a couple days ago, 
um, we were at Target and I love hanging out at Target. It's just, especially now, I mean, that's the only fun thing you can do these days. So um, I'm like, oh, I have to buy soap. Awesome. I'm going to Target. So anyway, we were just walking around and of course I'm wearing my mask. Um, and so automatically incognito. Um, but yeah, so we were just walking through the aisles and all of a sudden it's weird because when I walked in, almost every time I go to Target now, I hear one of our songs. It could be a variety of so many different songs, but yeah. I, was, I literally walked in and I was like, I wonder, I feel like I might hear my song today, but we'll see. I don't know. And then literally five minutes later, um, I don't know. I think Lonely Generation was playing or something. And I just literally was like, oh my gosh, that's my song. I mean, I had to tell that to the other people. Of course, I was like, you know, trying to play it cool. Yeah, but I, was to play my cool. Husband. I was like, yeah, yeah. That's, me. that's so cool. So I was totally freaking out and taking a video. And I do that every single time that I hear my song in public. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And I'll like take a little Instagram story or whatever, That's but cool. I just, I, 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 yeah. it. it's the coolest feeling. I'm like the fact that That's I'm here in this exact moment that the song is playing when they have so many songs playing throughout the day, I could have come in five minutes later. Cause I was, I don't know, checking my email in the car and I would have missed it. You know? So that kind of stuff is just so, so cool. I never so cool. get over it. That's, and I don't think you ever will. I, I, we asked the same question to Mary Wilson of the Supremes on yeah. the show. Uh, you know, she's like, you know, in her 70s and stuff. And she said the same thing. So anyway, oh. um, Sydney, you're such a great stage performer. And thank you. You've been so generous with your time. I promise just a few more questions and I'll let oh, you Oh, you're know. fine. No worries. You know, you are such an amazing performer and you really, and you've gotten better and better. Like I was, you know, in, in the research, we looked at one of your uh, Portland shows from this last oh, week, yeah. killing it. Uh, but um, but I, I wanted to ask you, you've played like at this point shows like Conan O'Brien. You've played all sorts of stuff. Do you get nervous at shows like this or have you reached a point where you're like, man, just, this is just a gig. I'm turn it on, go. It really depends, especially um, when we were touring, especially for the first album, it was so nonstop. Like, I didn't even have time to be nervous if I wanted to be. It was just so, like, from this to that to this to that. And, oh, yeah, you're doing Conan tomorrow. Oh, okay, cool. And then you have to, like, fly right afterwards. We have to rush to the airport to get to the next show. Um, so especially in that phase, we were just so like, it was such a whirlwind that I didn't even have time to be nervous. And I just felt so, we were doing it so much too, that it was like, oh, I'm playing Cool Kids. Okay, I mean, I know that song, you know what I mean? So at right. that point we already played hundreds and hundreds of shows. Um, so it felt actually pretty relaxed considering how hectic it could be. Um, but then I started to feel like after, I don't know, I, I think in the past like year, um, this is something I haven't, I haven't really talked about this too much, but in the past, year year and a half um when we would just play like random one-off shows before lonely generation came out um i all of a sudden was dealing with anxiety and i was feeling really anxious before shows and i never had experienced that mm. ever really even when we were playing these like you know playing the tonight show or whatever i didn't feel nervous interesting. so it was really interesting to feel that for the first time and i think it's just because you know we weren't playing as many shows because we were working on the album actively at the right. same time. So it was more sporadic and I would just get in my head so much and be like, Oh my gosh, like, how am I going to remember the words? How, you know, is this, I wasn't nervous about the people. I just all of a sudden told myself your memory sucks, you know, even though that was, <laughs> I knew all the songs, you know? So it was just more of like an, in my head kind of thing. And um, anyway, so I just kind of worked through that and found some things that really helped me to just calm myself before step. And then once we got on this tour in February, um, I felt so comfortable and I just felt like it clicked after yeah. the first show. I was like, oh yeah, I do do this and I do know how to do this. I'm, yeah. I feel good. And I know that's not always the case with people who have anxiety and stuff, um, of course. Um, but I think it was just a matter of like, it can happen anyway. You can get in your own head like crazy and right. totally experience something you've never experienced before that maybe isn't normal for you. Um, and I'm not saying it's gone forever because there are still times where I feel it, but um, but yeah, it was interesting to experience that later. You know, you would think as time goes on, oh, you would never be nervous if you weren't in the beginning. And um, later. You, know, you never know. So it's good to keep working on yourself so that you can, you know, be prepared and deal with things as, as they come. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder also along the generation, the lyrics are like a lot more personal, I think. So maybe, I, I just wonder if that has something, you know, it's like you're putting yourself out there a little more. Maybe, I don't know. Totally, yeah, totally. And it's, and it's new songs. And right. I always, you know, and that was, that's a natural thing. I mean, in the very beginning, if we would play like a new song in a set or a cover we didn't usually play, 
I was like a little nervous about it because I'd be like, oh yeah, like, do I know these words? You know, and I, and I would, but I still would like have the thought of like, do I know this? You know, so it, it was that, but with like 12 new songs. <laughs> so I think it was a natural thing as well, but I gave myself such a hard time about it. It's just, and I'm human, you know, it's, it's of fine. Course. Obviously of if course. I mess up, because who cares? You know, you're <laughs> just have fun. Yeah, and Sydney, you mentioned, of course, all this touring, and I wanted to ask you about that. Like, tell us, like, non-touring, you know, people. You, you know, there's years that you've been on the road 80% of the year. Do you get to, like, even realize where you are sometimes? Or do the shows kind of, like, be, like honestly, do they start to just, the arenas start to blend together, the venues? It's, it's so much. It starts, to, it starts to blend together for sure, and especially if you only have time to if you even have time to get a hotel, because a lot of times you're just in your tour bus and yeah. you don't even have time to stay at a hotel. Um, so, you know, sometimes you'll be at a hotel that looks kind of similar to everything else and in your tour bus, playing a show, visiting radio stations, and that all tends to look kind of the same everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it does, um, yeah. So I would say that's when it's like, whoa, wait, where are we? And I'd have to remember, I always would ask my mom before stage, and I still do this every day just in case, or every show day. I'll tell my mom right before I run up, I have my mic and they're already starting the intro. I'm like, wait, we're in uh, Boston, right? Boston, Boston, okay, <laughs> awesome. And then, I, then I run okay. up there. I'm like, Boston, what's up? So I literally still do that every show because I have had one or two times where I said the wrong city. So now really? I'm like, I have to know where I am. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the end of the world, but I was like, oh my gosh, that's like a classic, classic, classic mistake. mistake. <laughs> Listen, it's human. It endears you more. Um, yeah, Sydney, let, let me ask you a couple more questions. Is it Lonely Generation, have you had a chance to listen to it during this hiatus? Or it, and if so, I'm just curious, is it something that you're like, man, I wish I could have changed this to Diamonds? Or, I should, or is it something like, man, it's out there, it's my baby, and that's how it, how, how it went? I would say I feel like that. I feel very, um, you know, because we, I'm hypercritical before something comes out. So I'm like double checking. I'm like, wait, do I like that vocal take? Or what about that keyboard sound? I'm so nitpicky up until yeah. it's submitted. Um, so I do that so that I don't think later, oh my gosh, like I messed up right there. Or, I don't really like how that sounded. So I think because I'm so nitpicky up until the final moments, um, I have a little more freedom to be like, okay, this is my baby who's out there growing, doing whatever it's going to do. Um, and I'm really proud of it. So I still feel that way. Of course, maybe there will be things like 10 years down the road where I'm like, I don't, I don't think I'll regret anything, but you know, there might be something where it's like, oh, maybe I'd be into a different keyboard sound right now, but that doesn't matter because we'd be making new music by then anyway, you know? So, uh, so yeah, I, and I've heard some songs, probably the whole album, you know, during quarantine and stuff. And I just still listen to it. And I'm like, oh, I'm so proud of this. And I'm so happy that we made this music with these songs and it feels more relevant than ever. So I just, yeah, I have no regrets and I'm just wanting to still have as many people hear it as possible, even though it's a weird time to be, you know, it's a hard time to be promoting something as a musician, but um, we're still, yeah, very focused on just letting people hear that. Amazing. Sydney, I think this is a great place to leave it. You've inspired us. Oh. You've made us laugh. You made us want to go to Target. <laughs> go to Target. See what songs we can find. You know, you've inspired us. You, 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 you are a psychotherapist. You're deep. And <laughs> Sydney, if everyone we talked to had all these skills, like you, you're, you're, you're amazing. Thank you so much, Aww. Sydney. It was super enjoyable. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And you had great questions, which just makes for a great interview. That you are no. just as much a part of this as everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I appreciate it. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. And say hi to your siblings and everyone. And we can't wait to see you back on the road where you belong, me that too. stage. Rocking it. Oh, me too. And we'll hopefully see you in person sooner. Yeah, than Florida. Later. Whenever you come in Florida, you know, let's yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go say yeah. hi. I love thank it. You. Well, thank you. I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.